Good day everybody. Welcome to the Build a Better Chronomid tying series here. I'm going to have uh, three different videos for you in this little uh, mini series. Um, not so much focusing on patterns but uh, more on how to tie uh, different styles of chronomids and uh, hopefully some of these uh, tips will help you to uh, tie more consistent patterns and uh, maybe make tying them a little easier for you. Um, so the first one I'm going to tie is just the simple thread body chronomid and uh, utilizing the white bead that's uh, fairly popular. Um, you can do these in all kinds of different colors just by changing up the thread uh, and the rib color. Um, so quick just to touch on hooks and beads. Um, for the scud hooks um, I like to use on a number 10 I will use a 764 speed on a 12 or a 14 I'll use a 332nd speed and on a 16 I'll use a 564th speed. Um, now I don't tie 18s very often. Um, when I do I'll typically just short tie a 16 hook so normally I'll come down here into the bend but if I want to tie a 18 I'll take a 16 hook and just come kind of this you know not as far down and just shorten the overall pattern. That just allows me to use a little bit of a bigger hook. Um, the 18s can be tough for hookups and that kind of thing so short tying a 16 is kind of my go-to. Um, this particular hook is a size 12 so I've put a 3 30 seconds uh, bead on there and as far as thread goes uh, when you're tying these um, the 70 denier ultra thread is kind of my go-to uh, but any of the flossy type threads uh, will work quite well uh, you just want something that's going to lay nice and flat for you and be able to create a smooth body so any of the corded threads make that a little difficult uh, but these flossy ones work really well so we'll go ahead and get started on the first one here um, I'm just going to take several wraps right in behind the bead and then work my way down about two bead lengths and then come back up again and then I'm going to do the same thing work my way down and come back up and then you can go ahead and just trim out the tag here and <clears throat> all this is doing is you know, the whole time you're tying you want to be working working your taper so you're not stuck doing it at the end or anything like that. If you do it as you go it makes things a lot easier. Um, so now I've got some small ultra wire and you can pretty much use small size wire on anything from a 10 to a 16. Um, oftentimes when I get to the 16s I'll switch to an extra small uh, wire but you can get away with the, uh, with the small um, if you don't have extra small. Uh, but if you do, obviously, then go ahead and use it. Um, so I'm just going to take this, and I don't want to be tying it in down here, because once you wrap back up, you're going to be left with a bump. So what I recommend is just jamming it up against the bead, just like you see here. I'm going to do it on the near side, just so I can see it a little better. So tuck it right in on the uh, near side of the shank, and just catch it. And then we're going to wrap that all the way down into the bend. And once I get to right about there, my thread is sitting at a 45 degree angle. And if you want to keep your sizing consistent, then if you do that every time, you'll have consistent sizes. Sometimes you'll see a 14 and a 16, and if you put them side by side, they look almost the same. Uh, if the 16 is tied long and the 14 has been tied short, then uh, your patterns are going to be very similar in length. By using this method, you'll uh, keep a nice consistent size to everything. And then once you get to the bottom, if you give your thread a, or bobbin a counterclockwise spin, it's going to uncord your thread because it will tend to cord up as you wrap it, and it'll sit nice and flat. And then we can just go back up the shank, covering up the rest of that wire keeping everything nice and smooth and then you'll notice when I get to where I stopped before I've already kind of just worked that taper together and uh, you can see we've already kind of got that working for us 
So then I'm just going to spin this one more time, come back down just past where I stopped the first time, and then I'll come back up. And that's about all there is to it. So you can see we've got a fairly decent taper there, nice and skinny at the back, a little bit slowly getting bigger up to the top. So now we'll go ahead and wrap our wire. And my first wrap, I tuck right at the bottom of the thread down there. And then you're just looking for, I usually rib, uh, put seven ribs in. That's going to be uh, nine body segments. And uh, that's what the naturals have. But if you get anywhere from six to eight, you're doing just fine. And just do your best to keep them spaced nice and even. So we'll just wrap these up. Just like so, and then tuck it in behind the bead and just catch it with your thread. And then put four or five wraps on top, and then pull it back, four or five in behind. And then stay away from using scissors or nippers for wire. It tends to leave more of a tag than you want. If you just helicopter it, it'll bust it off nice and clean. And then we've already got our thorax working a little bit there. And at this point, we can just go straight into a whip finish. So I start my whip finish close to the uh, last body segment and work it up the bead a little bit. And that'll finish off the taper we want. <clears throat> Tug on your thread when you snip it out of there. Won't be left with any tag. And as you can see, we've got a nice tapered body there. So as I say, there's a couple... Uh, tips and tricks in there that make uh, tying these a little simpler um, probably quicker less thread wraps less thread you're going to use and uh, should allow you to get a nice consistent tie every time so I hope you enjoyed that um, the next one we will do uh, we'll, I'll do it on a long uh, longer curve shank hook and we'll put some gills in and use a tinsel body. Uh, so just kind of do a little bit more uh, kind of a tricked out pattern. Um, but these are great. These are great if you're starting out to tie. You can tie them in brown and black and green and red and you know any thread color uh, you can use. And then black rib, red rib, silver rib, rusty colored, green. Uh, there's wine. There's you know all kinds of stuff. So play with that. It'll get you. Uh, into fish no doubt and uh, hopefully this helps so uh, until the next one uh, cheers and tight lines